So you drive a Miata. You sacrifice comfort, convenience, capacity, everything you'd find in a CUV, but it's worth it. You look awesome, you feel confident, and you love your car. But are you simply accepting it? Have you looked into how to make it as good as possible? Regardless, let me help. This is my everyday carry, my what's in your pockets. This is my quality of life recommendations for the NC Miata. Let's go. Now, what is usually in your pocket is your phone. In my past life as a car reviewer, I was shocked at how many brand new cars had little or no solutions for your cell phone. Some do it really well, like Tesla, for example, and that's not Tesla fanboy speak, that's just, they do it so well. But you could simply leave it in your pocket, and especially if you listen to the radio or CDs, like it's 2004. But even if you have wireless solutions like Bluetooth, wireless CarPlay, or wireless Android Auto, it's still good to have your phone handy. Obviously not while you're driving, but let's say you're at a stoplight or you arrive somewhere and you're trying to look up something. It's just good to have it there, but I will address the majority. The majority of people want to have their phone plugged in, whether it's to charge it or to actually access Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in a wired fashion, which includes me. My solution for the longest time was to actually nestle the phone underneath the climate control, but it still falls into the shifter area if you accelerate, which is saying something because this car is not fast. And sitting right there, it blocks the heated seat controls. It's just not ideal. You could also put it in the door mesh, but it's just not easy to get to and definitely wouldn't work with a charging cable. So also in that past life, I reviewed a solution from Lamical. Lamical? Lamical? Really not sure how you say the brand. But they had a car phone holder where I had my iPhone 12 Pro Max in its carbon fiber case. Here's the case I still have. And it had a super magnet that would magnetize to this. Now I have this in this vent right here, which was hard to coerce in there, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But this solution was so perfect, in fact, that I'm gonna show you the little tiny ad I did for it. Don't you hate it when you get in your car and get ready to start your drive? You start your music and your navigation, and then you have nowhere to put your phone. Or you're already driving, and the spot you thought would work for your phone just results in chaos. Fortunately, I found the car phone holder from Lamical. It has easy foolproof installation. In the box, you get the mount, the magnet, and even a wipe to allow for easy installation on your phone or phone case. It features a unique twist and lock function, so it grips the car vent much better than other vent mounts. The magnet is strong enough to hold any phone or tablet up to 6.6 .6 pounds. It's more than any phone I've ever heard of. Plus, it works with basically any type of mobile phone. It's simple and compact and allows for 360 degrees of rotation. And mounting to an air vent means no more suction mounts blocking your views on the windshield. So I would consider doing that again, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max is just a little bit thicker and heavier than the 12 Pro Max to where the case just is too bulky for me. I, in some ways, I actually regret getting the big phone. Um, so I just go caseless because again, I'm a psychopath. And I didn't want the black magnet to be on the back of the white iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I've decided to go with a different solution this time. The solution this time is still magnetic, but it's actually using the built-in MagSafe, which technically I could have done with the iPhone 12, except I had this thin carbon fiber case that does interfere a little bit with the magnetic capacity. So being a phone with no case, or if I have a MagSafe case, I can use a MagSafe solution, stick the phone to it, and see how it works. So for those of you who want to know, this is the magnetic car mount from CNCMI. <laughs> uh, ordered from Amazon, the link will be below. And by the way, that's an affiliate link, so we get a small cut if you do purchase it through us, which is awesome, that would help the channel. And this was my backup plan, which I won't be using, but this is a Corbel, also highly rated, mag ring car mount, um, which was basically a adhesive one. So if this didn't fit in the vent, I was gonna put this somewhere else, maybe on the dash or something. In fact, a lot of people actually mount it right here there's maybe a company or someone found the solution to where you can mount stuff right there um 
that works. It's really whatever solution you find that works best for you. That's kind of the point of this video. These are all things that work for me. You can try it or you can find your own. Speaking of solutions though, how about drinks? Have you ever heard of Zoshirushi? If you haven't, you're seriously missing out. You clearly don't know the industry standard of rice makers. They make fantastic rice makers for home and even commercial purposes. And in fact, you've probably been in Asian restaurants where they have Zojirushis in the back, just making rice all day. They just work. They're solid, good quality. This is starting to sound like a Zojirushi commercial, but that's only because I really like this. I found that Zojirushi also makes thermoses, two sizes last I checked. Uh, this is the smaller 12 ounce one, which fits in the recessed cup holders of the NC2 and NC3 perfectly. I really like it. It's built quite well, has a dual locking lid. You can drink like that, unscrew it. I use this exclusively for water. Um, I just like to keep my thermoses separate. So what about coffee, you may ask? Mir. Mir is another big, more known brand for the thermos space, M-I-I-R. Um, this one came from Verbe Coffee in San Francisco and also 12 ounce, also fits the door cup holders, even better than the Zojirushi, I might add. But I enjoy having both. I keep one with water, literally at all times, and the other one with coffee whenever I wanna have coffee wherever I go. I'll throw them in both cup holders or just one alternate, or I will throw them in the center cup holders. Now, the center cup holders, as you may know, can handle bigger drinks. They're not recessed in the door cards, uh, so you, the sky's the limit, technically and they're a little bit bigger maybe. So I have put drinks in here in a pinch, although it does get in the way of shifting, especially the front cup holder. The rear one actually is not really in my way, but I'm picking at little details, I guess. Um, but that's an option for sure. You can have four drinks in a two-seater. How awesome is that? Now, you and C1 owners are probably already furiously typing in the comments that you don't have recessed door cards. In fact, you can fit taller drinks in your cup holders in your door. That's great. I used to have an NC1. I did appreciate that, I will say. I like the look of the door cards of the NC2 and NC3 better, but you have a point. NC1 door cup holders are more efficient for the drinks. They're less efficient for your leg room, and some, for some tall people, including myself, I'm relatively tall, six foot even, it kind of got in the way of my knee sometimes. So it's a trade-off, but it's worth mentioning. So the NC for a Miata has an impressive amount of usable cabin storage space. You have your glove box, which makes ND owners jealous, where I keep registration, insurance, sunscreen, tire pressure stick, wheel nut lock if applicable, which I don't currently have, and occasional emergency snacks, stuff like that. Then you have the center console rear storage, which is right behind you between the two seats where you have the infamous stupid gas cap trigger thing. But that's where I'll hide things such as my camera for quick access, winter hats and gloves, spare hats for passengers, and also emergency snacks. Now, if you aren't using the center cup holders, you can actually remove this insert and then you have more usable space, which could be for a phone or a wallet or AirPods. I throw things in there that I want to have quick and easy access to. And there's even this weird little thin strip here where I keep my chapstick in colder months. In summer months, it just melts completely. So <laughs> uh, we need to regress our chapstick technology. Now in front of the shifter, the NC1 had a little bit more usable space. The NC2 um, I guess you can put something here, but it will fly around when you're driving remotely spiritedly. So it's more just, I don't even know why that's there. And then the doors, you have the mesh pocket where I just put my business cards um, that I hand out if I want to like shoot someone's car that I see. It's kind of fun. And um, that's about it. There's not much that goes in here. Maybe a face mask during COVID. Uh, there's, yeah, it's pretty limited. And the last thing not that many people know about is up in the visors, which I hate the feel of these. They're so crappy. Uh, and my NC1 visor is like both broke, but there's actually a little thing where there's a mirror, really mediocre mirror, but there's a little card holder for like registration, I guess. That's something cool that I didn't know about originally, but both sides have it. So there you go. That's pretty much all the knickknack storage. Um, it's decent. Now the NC two and three door cards have this mesh thing. I think the NC1 had mesh here, at least mine did. 
down on kind of like the transmission tunnel in the passenger side area. So they're not quite identical, but they're pretty close. Now you can fit a ton of stuff in this car, relatively speaking. If you remember my road trip last year, that huge series I did, I fit so many things in the trunk and the passenger seat, and I was still able to put the top down. Now, you can also put some things behind the seats, depending on your height, maybe even a little bit of stuff underneath them. Um, but yeah, you can put things like shoes and jackets behind the seats, and they're relatively safe as well from the weather if you are top down, happen to get hit by some rain, you know. Um, and if you're a soft top owner, you actually have cubbies behind the seats where you can put more things. How convenient. Now for us power tractable hard top boys, you have essentially a second trunk that the top folds into. Now, a disclaimer, Mazda does not condone this or recommend it. In fact, it's literally written right there. Do not put things behind the seats. But I've done it for years and I've had no issue with both my power tractable hard tops. I mean, that's a decent amount of space back there. You just fold this thing down, easy access. Now you are limited by this distance. It's like the space back there is bigger than what you can actually fit back there, <laughs> but a bunch of small things work great. I've thrown light bags, backpacks, shoes, snacks, drinks, jackets, all sorts of things can be thrown back here. You just wanna make sure they all get removed before you put the top down. And anything you put back there will probably get a little bit dirty because the dirty top folds in. There's just, it's just not as clean of an area as the trunk. But speaking of the trunk, I believe it's five cubic feet, something like that decent space. It is actually a bit abnormally shaped because of, I guess, panels and stuff. Here's the kit for the flat tires, the air compressor that is supposed to be right there and always falls out. But otherwise, that's actually a pretty good sized trunk and the space works nicely. There we go. Got that thing finally situated right there where it should be strapped down. It's not going anywhere. I love it. That's what I said last time and then it ended up right there. Last thing in the trunk is this is where the, um, the kit, the kit is to raise your car when you have like a flat tire, you know, that kind of thing. Inside there, I also have a small first aid kit. Big thanks to Cameron for providing that uh, safety first, right? I didn't think to put a first aid kit in my car, but Cameron was like, hey, do you want a first aid kit for your car? And I was like, that's a, that's a great idea. It says one to two people. Uh, good thing I don't have a CUV. If you have malleable bags, you can actually fit a ton of stuff in here. I can even fit my guitar equipment, my pedal board, ugh, and my Stratocaster in its soft shell case. You just have to put the neck in first in that weird cubby over there, and it all fits. How about that? Not only that, but I have my Taylor, my big baby Taylor. It also fits. Now, in general, when I'm traveling, I usually have one kind of hard shell carry on case, a good fully packed out camera bag, a few bags for clothes, shoes, hats, workout gear, plenty of jackets and shoes. And here's how it actually all looks. Now the real trick is to have your really malleable bags shoved into the corners all over the car and then your hard shell stuff in the middle because that really can't be shoved anywhere else. Then you could fill in all the gaps with shoes, jackets. I could still fit a few more things in here and this is like clothes for weeks if I needed to. Plus, like I said, you have all the storage capacity down there, which you can't really see through the reflection and passenger seat if you don't have a passenger, but still plenty of space. And lastly, before any of you say I forgot something, there is a cubby down here below the track control fun button. Um, it's fine, but like the bottom is really slippery plastic. You can't really put anything in there without it flying out. I guess a wallet, um, maybe headphones. It is nice that that's there, but I have actually literally never used it. So food for thought, but that's the last. That's the last thing I swear in this whole interior. So that's how I do it. The stuff in the cabin is really what I always carry. And then the stuff in the trunk, you know, that fluctuates. But we got sunscreen for the random long drives with the top down, my patent pending two 12 ounce thermos solution, emergency snacks always, and the center console that's just convenient for hats and cameras. I love hats. 
and I'm quite happy with this phone solution. But what works for you? The great thing about a pseudo cult following like the Miata has is that people tend to be obsessed with sharing their solutions and how they made it work for them. Maybe you have a different generation Miata. And in that case, let us know in the comments what works for you. We'll all see you in the comments. Drop a like if you liked anything I came up with and we'll see you in another video very soon. Until then, cheers.